Hello, friends, and welcome back to episode two, Mandy. Episode two. Look at us. We're on a roll. Of Find Your People podcast. And um, this has been a big week. It's been a big week for a lot of reasons. Um, And one of the main ones is baseball. So this is a very baseball forward episode. And I'm so excited. There's so much to talk about. Um, and uh, I'm just so excited to see your sweet face this morning. I will say I took a picture off to the side because I thought your reaction would be like <laughs> roll your eyes when you saw what is on my head. Of Mandy, course but, not. Uh, uh, for all Mandy's friends that are so excited to talk about Tierra's, I'm wearing mine today <laughs> because it's usually implied, but um, Katie's birthday week is, seems like the perfect day to wear a Tierra. So. Um, there is pictorial evidence. This is my favorite one. It's based on the girls of Great Britain and Ireland here. That was the queen's favorite. <laughs> it can be yours too on Amazon. <laughs> we might need to add that link to the yep. show notes. <laughs> yep, this is um, my favorite one of all my tiaras. Well, well done and happy Who birthday. Who says that friend. sentence? Who happy. says that sentence, Mandy? <laughs> Listen, Katie, Katie does. Katie does. Well, word help. Oh, and I hope you, I'm glad you had a good birthday yesterday. I know you're going to talk a little bit about yeah, it. So. I did, I did. So I'm glad you had a good day. Yeah, I had a great day. I can't wait to tell you all about it. Okay, good. Um, Jenny, Jenny, the Jenny, the wine runner um, has decided to get her loudest toy out to chew Love on it. when we record. So I apologize. I'm here for if it. You guys hear anything in the background. Um, okay. So just, you know, random bits and pieces of things that occur to me during the week um one of the things that struck me last week is where the hell do you tap your card when you're trying to pay and why does it make me feel so old okay i here's how old i am i have avoided getting a tapper card because i know i would look like a fool you have it you you have oh, a tapper card, Katie. You just don't know. Because finally one day at Whole Foods, I um asked, you know, I'm sitting there tapping and I feel like I feel like my mother. I feel like my mother trying to use technology. And this <laughs> little girl that's checking me out was like, I said, Why I can I, I, yeah. And she's like, Okay, well you look on the back of your card. Okay. So look on the back of your card, and there's a little thing that's sort of like a megaphone. Like it's okay. a series of parentheses that get bigger. So it okay. ends up being yep. or like a, like yep. a megaphone. Yep. That is the portion of your card that needs to be tapped. And so you just have to find oh. that same symbol on the pad. Okay. And that's where you tap it. So but you- here's the problem. Not all of the pads have that symbol in a very visible place. So then you're just, again, randomly tapping. And my it old lady me- eyeballs won't uh, right, Let me get my glasses so I can see where to tap it. <laughs> Lord, if I had a dollar for oh, my mother. My that's mother why I don't, I don't do self-checkout. I don't do, if I, I can help it. Um, I, hate I hate self-checkout. I don't want to bag my own stuff. Right right listen i'm not good at it i have spatial challenges i do send the food down the conveyor belt in the order that i wish yes. to be done and how happy are you when you have a woman bagging your groceries as I opposed know. to a boomer man because yeah. that boomer man's goal his goal is for you to, to get his goal bag. is to get as many items in mm-hmm. one bag as he can get yeah let me tell you what that means for me when I have to park across three parking lots because everybody and their brothers on 30A for the summer. Yeah. And then I've got three 500 pound bags of groceries to haul across the parking lot. It is not good because what I prefer to do is I prefer for you to bag all of my cold items yes. together so that I may only pick those bags up yes. out of the car and get the others as I please. Let me tell you. Yes. That's mm-hmm. why I send it down the conveyor belt together. Exactly. I organize it for you. And and women know, and they just put them in just like they're supposed to be. And then you get that boomer man and he's all pleased as punch that he got, you know, $150 worth of groceries in three bags. 
sir. Preach. And then you got to tap. You are not my friend. And then you have to tap. And then you, and have, then to... you have to tap. Ugh. Well, I that's good like to I'm know the about modern, the fun. I feel like I'm the modern equivalent of somebody writing a check. Yeah. When I try to tap. Or, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. It's like, okay. Well, that's good to know. You just bump. But yeah. So there's your tip of the week. nasties together of the megaphones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, nasties. Were we, did we grow up in the 90s or what? I think we did. Oh, my gosh. Um, <sighs> okay. So that was that was that rant of the week. Okay. I love that now, rant. I'm now we're going to have a little legal corner lesson. Love it. Um, find your lawyer founder <laughs> we are going to talk about what in the heck is going on with michael orr and the twoies oh. who were the subjects of the movie the blind side is that what the name yep. yeah yeah so it came out this week that uh michael was actually not adopted by the twoies that they simply had a conservatorship over him I was actually just listening to the ESPN Daily podcast, and they were talking about this. Um, if you're interested in hearing the reporter who broke the story, um, so anyway, you can listen to that and get all the details of that. But it sort of led me because there have been a couple of conservatorship issues. Uh, leave Britney alone, right? Uh, well, I don't know. She's not doing very well. Maybe well, they shouldn't but, have left her alone. Okay. Well, so let's talk about this. So when I first graduated from law school and went to work in Noonan, my boss was the county conservator. It wasn't called a conservator back then. It was called the guardian of your property. Okay. Um, so I have some experience in this. Can you right. see Jenny? I right see now? Jenny's nose. I yep. made you. Hello. Um, so you see, and that sort of helps solidify yeah. the concept for you if it's called a guardian of your property so you can have a guardian of your person and the only time a guardianship comes into play is when somebody is ruled mentally incompetent right or they are a minor okay right so we'll just talk about the mentally incompetent side um that's, that's Brittany all day or day <laughs> so um the guardian of your person has to make sure you like go to your doctor's appointments, you have groceries, you're clean, like that sort of thing. So we right. obviously didn't do that in the law office, but we sure. were the guardian of the property. Right. And so if somebody is, you know, declared incompetent for whatever reason, and the way that happens is a person has to file a petition in the probate court. And then different states do it differently, but typically there's some sort of either a panel of pe you know people mm -hmm. like doctors, social gotcha. workers, that sort of thing, or just a doctor, um, you know, and not a podiatrist, like a doctor who is qualified to, you know, determine right. people's capacity. They examine the person and, you know, they render their opinion as to whether they are competent or not. And then the person can oppose that there can be an actual trial where they say i'm competent i'm fine and the evidence is presented you know the whole it's not something that just is signed in the dark of night and you know established without this person knowing that it's happening okay so a lot of what we had were folks who had been like in a bad car accident uh-huh and that was one of the ones gotcha. we had a guy who was a fedex driver and he had been in a really bad car accident, had a traumatic brain injury, and got a ton of money. Um, and his mm. family, of course, got sideways about it. And of so course they did. An impartial conservator was appointed. So that's the and like with Brittany, the thing with Brittany that you have to think about is just because somebody makes poor decisions, right? That doesn't make them incompetent. She's that makes them a person right. who makes poor decisions. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she's making right. some, honey. She, if and you listen, are watching her on the clock app, she is right. making right. some very uh, unfortunate, we'll call them unfortunate decisions. Yeah. yeah. About so, wardrobe and lack of wardrobe. But you know. Tattoo you placement. <laughs> the dancing. The oh, dancing. Oh, um, she is not herself. You, can but you imagine? Still, I mean, she still has control of her. 
but I think she is herself, Katie. Yeah, I know, right? I think that's the thing. If I think she didn't have her. money, she would be in a trailer park in South Georgia. No, she would be in nobody, Louisiana. nobody, or on Florida in Florida. Nobody would be questioning it, right? But there's money involved. That's exactly right, and so that gets us back to the whole Michael Orr and the Tui thing, right? Because Michael Orr was an adult when this yes. happened this was happened this happened before he went to Ole Miss I think I mean, he was yep. definitely 18 yep um and he re he recalls being asked to sign this paperwork and I you know he, it'll all come out different every, as we learn there are three sides to every story sure so the whatever's in the middle tends to be what's most often has the most truth to it but his claims so far are that like he knew that that was happening, but he was told that was a step to finalizing adoption. Um, so that's what he was told. That's what he was told. Or he remembers. He's old now. Look, it's right. Been a hot minute. This dog is about to climb into my lap. I hope oh, I ready. love it. I do Jenny. not. I would like for her not to climb in my lap. <laughs> um, one of those things that you talked about last week on the podcast, a Kong or a Matt. Yeah, listen, we've, we've, uh, I could, I should have done that, but I didn't think about That's it. That's all right. Listen, you need to settle down. Um, but anyway, so it, apparently this conservatorship has been in place. And people are like, how can that be? Well, unless somebody knows about the conservatorship, they're not going to stop you from getting a loan to buy your house. Yeah. And if he's not obviously incapacitated, then there's no reason to question his ability to contract for himself. So it probably just has not come up. Probably not. Here's what I think. And this is not legal in any way. This is Katie watching things and observing and being a pretty good judge of character. I think his new little bride is in his ear that he's not making a lot of money. Or somebody in his life. It might not be his wife at all. Is in his ear saying, oh, look at the Tuies. They're so wealthy. Well, they've also got their own businesses. And if you listen to the son, like the real life son, he was on some podcasts and he was like, my friends are all calling me like, where's all this money you made off this movie? You, you know, you don't buy our dinner, like joking about it. Cause he's, they're not, I, I, I think somebody is telling him in his ear things to get him riled up. Or, it, it, and it may not even be somebody in his ear. It may be just Him himself. Because he's been retired from the NFL long yep. enough that he, you know, is suddenly go. And I think that's, you know, I don't think that's unreasonable no. to say. This movie made a gabillion dollars. But I don't think it made the twoies a bagillion dollars. I do not think it did either. And that gets us to the writer's strike. Right. And the actor strike currently going on in Hollywood. I yep. don't doubt for a minute that they didn't make a bunch of money off of it because yep. of the way way Hollywood structures all of that. Yep. So it gets back, and what my main point of all this your your le your legal advice of the day is communicate. Yeah, communicate with people because yeah. probably what happened is Michael retired from the NFL. The amount of money he's making all the time went down, and he thought way down. I should be having, I should have more money from this movie. Yeah. Sandra Bullock made a bunch of money off this movie. Sure. Why didn't I? And he went to the Tuies and they probably got defensive. Yeah. Which happens. I see it happen a lot. Yep. And they, they're they like, well, we don't have any money either. But they didn't, the, the step, and then, you know, at that point, people are sideways and lawyers yep. get involved and lawyers want to make a penny. So it just didn't happen that like if they sat down and everybody sat down and disclosed yeah. which is what michael's asked for is an accounting of who yeah. made what from this yeah. movie um yeah and so, you know hopefully that'll happen I think he's gonna find it's the studio yeah i think so and, and I, no, you know i think no too <laughs> part of what probably what upset him was all this time he thought he was adopted yeah and he's not 
And that I think is a whole separate issue, but it's being tied back in because right. of the money. And it's because and they didn't communicate. The saddest thing I heard, and again, I've just heard the son talking. He said like three weeks ago, he was texting Michael for advice on stuff and they were yeah. great. And all of a sudden he won't return any anything and he's yeah. like i thought i ha- it doesn't matter to me if he's actually adopted or not i thought right. he was my brother right and that's where the sad part is to me yeah um and sure. it's just that it's the relationship side yeah for sure so yeah it's a mess i know it'll yeah. get straightened out eventually but let me also say they better not make sandra bullet give her oscar back that's her ridiculous. woman just lost her life partner that's like a the- week ago like let her have some peace please and it has nothing to do with michael or like come on right what does her acting have to do with nothing the in china nothing uh, nothing leave her alone okay so oh 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 before yeah. we move on so i as we were sitting here talking about this i remembered there was a netflix series about this very issue and this when it goes very sideways and when people take advantage of it It's called I Care A Lot. Okay. And it's about a crooked legal, this is the description, a crooked legal guardian who drains the savings of her elderly wards. And then, uh, so it stars Roseman Pike, Peter Dinklage, who I Uh love. Uh, Diane West is the wrong older woman to drain the account of because she ends up, uh, it's pretty clear pretty early on that the family of this particular woman, Diane West, is not a nice family and she is messing with the wrong people, but it's called I Care A Lot. Okay, and it's that's just to the extreme what happens when there's a conservatorship and it's yeah, very that's- good. I mean, when I first started practicing law and we, cause, uh, my boss had, I don't know, 35, 40 yeah. uh, people that he was the guardian of the property for. Yeah. And, you know, I'd, I'd pay a lot of them were kids who had gotten a life insurance settlement and said so there mm. wasn't a whole lot of maintenance to do on those, but we had a handful that we yeah. paid their bills every month and yeah. you know, gave them an allowance and all that. And, you know, you sit there and look at all those checkbooks and you think, yeah, you got to have some moral fortitude. Yep. To, you know, this not woman dip into does those not. and yeah. think nobody's going to notice. So. And she like goes to the extreme of hunting down marks. Shame on her. It, uh, well, That's shame. Awful. yes, just it's really good. I highly recommend. Okay, we'll check it out. And now we'll move on to a feel good story. So last, let's move on to baseball. I'm going to do a baseball story of the week. I've decided. Love and it. It's going to be about professional baseball and it's going to be stories because I think a lot of the reason why Katie and I actually enjoy sports as much as we do is because we find out the stories yes. about people. And I'm a so, storyteller. And listen, I can't I tell you it. the difference between a fastball and a curveball. <laughs> and I watch at I least a little bit of that. I can't. And I watch 162 baseball games, at least at a minimum yeah. 160. Yeah. I probably watch more than that because I watch college too. Anyway, yeah. I, I can't. It, yes, I appreciate athleticism and that, but it's the stories. Yep. So I'm going to tell y'all some stories and that way y'all can get interested in baseball too. And listen, I know college football is about to start. Yes. But it's too we can hot. Do both. We can it's, do both. And it's too hot to really get into it. And they're going to be playing, you know, New Mexico State. No offense yeah. to New Mexico State. We love you. Yeah. But the games don't get really interesting until later. So in All the right. meantime, you can be invested in baseball Let's and have something to watch. Okay? Love it. So um, diehard Atlanta Braves fan, of course. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Braves <laughs> are freaking killing it this year. They, they are, are sort of like that alabama uh equivalent in baseball for college football um and if play baseball playoff baseball is sort of a crapshoot but if everything works out like it should they should end up playing the dodgers 
for the National League pennant. That okay. they're sort of the two best teams. And if if I were okay. betting, which I don't, although I've thought about starting, um, they uh those two teams should end up playing each other, and the winner of that those games would go to the World Series. Love it. So uh, this player that I'm going to talk about this week, I'm actually he actually plays for the Dodgers. His name is Mookie Betts. I love Mookie Betts. I love Mookie Betts. Mookie First of all, up. best yeah. name ever. Mookie. Okay. Put a pin in that. We're going to come back to it. So Mookie grew up outside of Nashville. Um, gr- just a great athlete all around. He's also like a professional bowler. Like, honestly, he Love bowls in some professional bowling league in the off season. Like he's, and he's just a great athlete. Um, and he's also just a great person. He got drafted by the Boston uh, Red Sox and played in Boston for the first part of his career. And you have heard, you will hear many stories about Mookie, how at, at, after a game, the team feeds them, they call it the spread. Mm. And many reporters have talked about the fact that Mookie used to gather up the remaining spread as he was leaving and he would distribute it to people, you know, unhoused people in the street as he was leaving. And when the reporters would see him doing that, they would want to do a story about it. And he would say, no, no, absolutely not. We're not talking about it. Um, So just a great guy. And he got traded from the Red Sox. And it was like a huge deal because like he had won the MVP. He had won all the awards and he hit free agency and the Red Sox wouldn't pay him um, what he thought he deserved to stay. And Mm -hmm. he got traded to the Dodgers and it was a big fat hairy deal. Yeah. So sounds familiar. Fast forward a couple of years later, and my beloved Freddie Freeman, who was the first baseman for the Braves, had been drafted by the Braves. Same, very parallel track yep. to Mookie. Um, Freddie got traded to the Dodgers, and now Freddie and Mookie are BFF. So that just makes me love Mookie even Not more. It. Yeah. So Mookie's just of course a great they player. are. Of course they are. They've lived through the same thing. They both have young families, and they are just BFF. So the funniest story this week. Uh, Mookie was um, on the on in the on deck circle, which for those of you who don't know baseball, the there's a person in the batter's box. That's the batter. That's who the pitcher is throwing the ball to. But just off to the side is called the uh, on deck circle, and the person who's going to bat next stands on the on deck circle, and it's sort of close to the stands. So if you're sitting right there, then you know you can actually talk to the guy standing. Yeah. on deck circle some of them are probably like won't acknowledge you but well we'll say they're in the zone right right Mm -hmm. um so apparently this guy was talking to Mookie when he was in the on deck circle and he said Mookie if you hit a home run I'm gonna name my daughter her middle name is gonna be Mookie (laughs) and Mookie was like no man don't do that don't do it (laughs) and the guy's like yeah no I'm doing it well lo and behold if you get up there and not only did he hit a home run he hit the farthest home run of his life. Stop it. And so there's video, you see him, he circles the bases, he touches home, and then he actually comes back and gives the guy a fist bump after, you know, it's done. And the Stop. guy's on the phone. The guy's on the phone because like, Mickey's like, you have to call your wife. Like, she ain't going to be down for that. Yeah, she ain't going to be down for naming your daughter Mookie. So the guy is on his phone. Mookie gives him a fist bump, whatever. And that was like several weeks ago. Well, y'all. Guess who was born on August 7th? Stop. Stop. And listen to this name. It gets even better. Her name, Francesca Mookie Mancuso. (laughs) Mookie Mancuso. Look, if that's not a baseball name, I've never heard one better. Francesca Francesca Mookie Mookie Mancuso. So. Here's what I'm foreseeing that that child will have their college paid for by <laughs> Mookie Bat. Listen, so Mookie uh, posted on his socials and he was like, because the guy who, you know, he had obviously posted on his socials, but nobody thought, I think his, and I think his, I can't remember, I think his Instagram handle is something like Meatball. Oh <laughs> I think it has Meatball in it. Of course. But Mookie got on his socials, I think it was yesterday, it was telling the story and he was like, Francesca's my girl, y'all. I She's bet. my girl. Oh, yeah. 
Mookie Betts, he's always been so like amazing. Just you can tell he's got a great personality, but this just seals the deal, man. As they were so the, the Dodgers played on Sunday night baseball two weeks ago, I think, and they uh-huh. interviewed Freddie and Mookie together. And one of the things they were talking about was so Mookie's wife just had their second baby. Um, and yes, because we saw them at the home run derby. Yes, we were yep, watching that yep. together. Uh huh. Yep, uh huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, and so Mookie was on paternity leave, and I think they were in. Were they in Boston? They may have been in Boston, and he was stuck in traffic trying to get to the game. He was supposed to start. Yeah, and he was stuck in traffic, and so Freddie called him and was like, "Well, how are? Where are you? How far out are you?" And yeah, Mookie's like, "I, I'm, go- I'm going to be late." And Freddie said, "I'm going to lay all. What do you need?" Yeah, I'm gonna have all your stuff laid out for you. And so Mookie said he got there and he walked in and there was all his stuff. Like Freddie had it all laid out, and so he suited up and ran out. And then and Mookie usually plays in the outfield, but that yeah. game coming in late, he played second base. And right immediately, and immediately turned to double play. Yeah, right next to Freddie, and Freddie's like, Mookie likes to talk. I don't, I don't like to talk. I love it when Freddie's mic'd up, though. He says that, but he talks nonstop when he's mic'd up. I'm right. like, you can't stop talking when you're at bat, Freddie. There's wind, fellas. There's wind. It's like, <laughs> what? Come on, Fred. Like, concentrate, buddy. <laughs> so anyway, there's your, there's your baseball story of the That's week. And hopefully, favorite story. Hopefully. I don't know if I really think hopefully because the Dodgers will be tough, but yeah. maybe hopefully we'll be playing them. Uh, wouldn't that be oh that'd be wild for the national league pennant. yes yes coming up i love it well that's i love that thank you mandy for that i, me- I love that little story what a great <laughs> what a great little pick me up today now you have somebody to root for baby mookie definitely you know francesca is set that's all i'm saying his girl i never could you, oh my god uh, there better be a picture of Mookie holding that baby at some uh, point no. in my uh, life. No. Now I have I to go follow him on all the socials. Yes, you do. Yes, you yep, do. Yep, yep, yep. Well, to continue the baseball love this week, yesterday for my birthday, the Little League World Series decided to open. <laughs> so thank you, Little Happy. League World Series, for Happy that birthday, birthday gift. Baby. <laughs> But I, um, you know, I'm a creature of habit. Some people say that makes me easy to kill. Um, (laughs) But I I think it's that I'm very consistent. Um, And every year for the opening week or so of the um, Little League World Series, I do, don't be shocked, Mandy, a theme dinner. And (laughs) what I do is I make a pot of chili and I do chili cheese dogs like you would get at the ballpark. Of course. And so the other day I made a big pot of chili, not a big pot, like a pot of chili, regular pot of chili. And I was talking to somebody and they were like, well, is it good? I'm like, I'm not eating it. I made that (laughs) pot of chili specifically for chili cheese dogs. And that doesn't start until the 16th. So I'll tell you on the 16th how it turns out. And so last night after a, a great day, which we'll talk about in a minute, I got home and started watching the Little League World Series and made myself a yummy chili cheese dog. And it was so good. It was so good. So yeah. the theme dinner is not limited to the Olympics, ma'am. The theme oh. dinner is very transferable. It should be. Yeah. I and well, it should be. We'll have to figure out something for the World Series. Yeah. We'll figure something out. Yeah. Um, But so the Little League World Series is these little teams. Look, I love stories like the Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman friendship story. These little boys room like live together in dorms and up in Pennsylvania from all over the world. There was one kid from Rhode Island who like learned Japanese just so he could talk Just so he could talk to him he learned a few phrases like that is so sweet these kids are amazing amazing kids they're coaches you know i think part of it's because they know they're mic'd and they know they're on national television but the coaches really are kind and inspiring and funny and great with these kids 
Um, so yesterday kicked it all off and the way it works is it's USA versus the world. And so at the end, when we are in the finals, it'll be one team from somewhere else and one team from America. And so yesterday, um, we started with some brackets, Panama beat, um, the Czech Republic four to nothing. And that was really the only blowout. These teams are really good. Um, Rhode Island beat Nevada, which is the uh, Northeast versus uh, West, no, Mountain, Mountain, Nevada's Mountain. Um, and Rhode Island's got a good little team. They've got a really good pitcher. Um, Japan beat Cuba. Um, Japan is always really good, as we know that they, you know, have a great league and they send some people over here to play in the major leagues. And so they are very regimented. I mean, you can imagine what, you know, if they're um, so good at their education system and all that, they do the same kind of thing with their and athletes. Isn't this, isn't this the first time Cuba's been back in a while? Yes. And the, I mean, so this is where the feel good comes into me. It's double elimination. So we'll see all these teams again. But Cuba, those little boys are so cute. They work so hard. They had major league players sponsoring them to get them here um to play like it's they're the sweetest little kids they're good they're i mean it was they they lost to japan a powerhouse mm -hmm. one to nothing and so they held their own it was a close game it was a great so i'm you know they're kind of already my sentimental favorite is these little cuban precious angels the story y'all i'm telling y'all it's the story it's the best it's the best and then on the last game last night was the hometown Pennsylvania boys from the Northeast and Texas from Needville, Texas. And let me tell you, Needville, whew, they have three lefties. Wow. And they're, they're all really good pitchers. Pitching is, so the biggest difference in um, any other baseball and this is that they really stick to the pitch count because they don't want to wear these boys out because you know they're children and you know they don't want them having tommy john surgery at 14 so they mm -hmm. really stick to the pitch count they're very strict limits so there's a lot of strategy in how you rotate them and who plays and you know, they pull from every position to pitch. Like they do multiple roles on the team and having three lefties is going to be a real interesting combo, I think, um, for Texas to have um, something that most teams are not used to facing at bat. Yeah. Um, so, and they're good. The other thing this year that is just killing me and my nephew has this, um, is the hair <laughs> there's some hair just like in the college world series honey there's some hair there's some flowing locks there's some mullet things going on <laughs> but i highly if you like baseball at all the major league players watch the games they'll you know post on their socials about you know encouraging things for the kids there is this Sunday night at seven o'clock, I wish I could remember who it is, but you might ESPN. know ESPN is going to have the major league game at the little league world series and the kids love it. The players love it. It's just, is it, uh, is it the Phillies and the nationals? That yes. It? That's yeah. I'm, so yes, Bryce Harper will be yep, there. Yep. So, so that'll be great. Nick it's Kakiana almost as emotional David. as when they play on the field of dreams. Almost. Yeah. It is just, this is the kind of stuff that Mandy and I live for. <laughs> oh, I think it, this is, this is better than the field of dreams because yeah. they, they interact with. The yes. Boys. It's the best. And so some you can of imagine them, are losing yeah. their minds. No, some of them even played in the little yeah. World series. That's, so it's a full circle moment for a lot of, it's just the best. I cannot say it enough. It's just the best. Yep. So today we've got, um, and this will be tomorrow. We're, I'm going to put this up tomorrow, but um, so today we've got like Australia and Curacao, which I know how to say only because I've been watching the Little League World Series for a while. Well, you know who's from Curacao. 
Which um the Ozzy Ozzy Aldis. Yep, yep, yep. Brave second baseman. They always do very well in the World Series. Um, the Northeast, which is Seattle versus Maine. Um, Chinese Taipei, which is always really good, versus Canada, which is sometimes hit or miss, but um, that should be a good game today. And then California and Ohio, that can, those Californians can pop out some baseball players. So um, we will see. It should be another good day of baseball. And I will have, yet again, I will have a chili cheese dog for dinner. And the good news is uh, that'll give me something to watch because neither the Braves nor the Cubs Look at that. Look so. at that. And you're going to love these boys. I'm telling you, they're just precious angels from heaven. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. So speaking of my birthday, um, I use, just, I don't. Listeners, a reminder. It is my Katie is Katie is still wearing her tiara. I am still wearing a tiara. Continue. Again, look, I can wear it like this is the second time this year I've worn it. Halloween is always the other day. <laughs> So, um, Elvis is dead and I don't feel so good myself because on <laughs> my social every single year because I was born the day Elvis died. Same day, same time, same year. So, man, I'm going to quit laughing and I'm going to let you describe what's about to happen. I am Elvis. I'm Elvis reincarnated. <laughs> I have a velvet Elvis hanging in my house. I get something Elvis every year. This year it was a book. Um, so this is the only thing Elvis I can do though. You ready? I'm ready. Gotta quit laughing though to do it. <laughs> I can't see I'm, I'm she's centering laughing. herself. She's centering her <laughs> she's I can do the lip. That's all I can do. She's doing the Elvis lip. <laughs> That's it. I can't sing. I can shake my hips, so I'm not going to do that because that will offend you. And I was going to say, I feel like there's more in there. Uh, there is, but it's the lip is what I can do. You're, sell you're selling yourself short. Yeah, but that uh, quote is from Louis Grizzard, who is my favorite Southern humorist. God rest his soul. Catfish and cornbread were his dogs. Like, he was the best, the best of us. From another, uh, he's another actually era. from Moreland. Which Moreland, is a Georgia. suburb of Noonan. It is, it is indeed. I have been through Moreland, Georgia. But you can go to Sprayberry's Barbecue in Noonan and get the Lewis Grizzard special, which I'm telling you, is Brunswick stew. Uh huh. I can't remember if it's a sandwich or just the pork um, and onion rings. Love it. Well, he, that's a, there's a book called Elvis is Dead Enough. Don't feel so good myself. Yeah. So every single year, that's what I post. And well, I, um, I felt all the love yesterday. What I did, and you know, I don't, I know you're not going to believe this, Mandy, because I'm wearing my tiara today. <laughs> I generally don't like a huge deal made about my birthday. I am one of those people who likes to blend into the wallpaper, which is great that I'm a minister. <laughs> she rolls her eyes saying. sarcastically. It is, oh, anyway. But I did something yesterday that a lot of people were upset about, but I think it's so important, um, especially we talk about this a lot in ministry is finding Sabbath, finding mm -hmm. days to renew your soul. And we all need to do that. And, you know, everybody's like, you don't want to spend, you know, I don't want you to be alone on your birthday, which is very kind and thoughtful. And I appreciate where that was coming from because it was definitely coming from a place of love and friendship and kindness. But I just wanted to be me and do me at my own pace in my own time. So I got up when I wanted to <laughs> and I went and had, um, the only thing I was a little disappointed about is no brunch spots that are fun in Atlanta are open for brunch on Wednesdays. Um, it's always, you know, they serve it on Saturday, Sunday. Right, right. So I went to a great spot, but it's a chain and I prefer local. I went to another broken egg. Oh so yeah, I have those down here. I love them, love them. And I got my favorite brunch meal, which is a crab cake Benedict. Um, there's a story there that I I could probably tell now. I'll tell that story another day when we're talking about past work experiences. <laughs> 
And um, then I went to one of my favorite spots, um, SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, has a location up here in Atlanta and a campus. But they also have a fashion museum up here. And it is very small. It, doesn't it takes less than an hour to go through it. They usually have a, um, photo a photography exhibit and then clothing exhibit. That's and cool. I have seen up close, in person, stitch by stitch, Oscar de la Renta. Wow. Dresses, Carolina Herrera. So it's not student exhibits. No. Oh. Now, my goal in life is to go down to SCAD, fat, SCAD in Savannah for their student fashion show. But those tickets are free, but they're extremely hot. That's like the biggest ticket in town down there. Wow. Yeah. Um, but so right now it's this exhibit. It's, it's kind of out there, but I loved it because I love a sparkle. It's about um, a designers called the blonde and um, one of them is a drag queen. And so it was very gender fluid, but it was extremely sparkly, which I uh, clearly love with it. my tiara on, I'm loving it. Everybody but, needs um, to sparkle. It, it, I posted some pic, a picture of the pearls. I'm going to post some more today. I, the detail and i do a little bit of hand embroidery because mm -hmm. i'm an old lady i'm 185 I, on the inside i prefer cross stitch well i can do that too because <laughs> i'm 185 on the inside so what i'm looking at when i go in there is color stitching um the they had a lot of mirror pieces I mean, mm -hmm. it was just the craft, the craftsmanship alone was just incredible. And that so I did fun. that and I was in awe of all those things. Uh, the photography exhibit is a little risque <laughs> right now, but I appreciate the male and female form very much as an art form. And so I got to see it. Um, That's why we like baseball, y'all. <laughs> And there was a lot of both and a lot of intertwining going on. I'll just leave it at that. But it was, look, it, it was fantastic. It is not for the children, this exhibit, but it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. So Good. I love that. And then I went down the street to the High Museum and I visited with all my favorite things. So my sticky now here's, chair. Here's my question. Here, see, yep. here's where I get hung up on the day yes. Here as I'm picturing all of this. Yeah. It's all the driving and parking you're having to do. See, so, okay, <laughs> parking, uh, girl, I feel you on that because I have gone all the way down to the high and the lot has been full and I have left. And it's also a thousand degrees outside. So, both Scad Fashion and the High have parking decks with okay. the elevator right there. Okay, good to, free know. Par good to free know. parking, free parking for me at the High because I'm a member. So you can ride with me. And I go on like a Wednesday afternoon because there nobody's go. there and I have the whole place to yeah. myself. I don't go on a Saturday. Um, and it's all inside and air conditioned and love. Okay. It. So, okay. You're checking well, off all my, yep, all my visitations. I, look, Katie would not be doing this if it was in any way inconvenient to her. <laughs> so I went and saw, so they have these beautiful um portraits of native american chiefs and um cool. yeah there's a whole wall of them and it's by a very famous artist i posted a picture of it they're gorgeous so i went and said hey to the fellas <laughs> and then they had some new paintings up they rotate a lot of the old masters so i saw some things i had not seen before which were gorgeous landscapes and Good. All that I visited my I stopped and smelled my favorite rose. I didn't really smell it, but I thought, can I fit this in my shirt <laughs> and take it home with me? <laughs> and then I visited my stickly chair. I love a stickly and a um oh gosh, who's that other architect? Falling water. 
Uh, Frank, Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright chair. They have a Frank Lloyd Wright and a Stickley. So I visited my chairs. Oh, good. But then they had a Samurai Warrior armor exhibit. I wish y'all could see Katie's face. <laughs> Girl. She is really, really excited. It was beautiful. <laughs> Samurai exhibit, y'all. <laughs> I told you I'm 185. Y'all, the leather work. <laughs> this is from like the 1300s. Oh, oh my le- God. <laughs> it doesn't take much to make my little heart go pitter pat. <laughs> the the metal work, the leather work, the okay, you cross stitch, honey. They wove silk thread together tighter than i i mean like i would go cross-eyed in my just looking at it i went cross-eyed again my hand went numb <laughs> like <laughs> it was amazing and beautiful and anyway it was just great it was like the best i'm so glad i'm so glad <laughs> good yep so did all that and then um i stopped by my favorite bakery in atlanta on ray yeah and got four little pedophores because i'm trying not to eat as much sugar but it was my birthday <laughs> so i got birthday. some pedophores and they're delicious or two more for tonight good and then i came home and watched little league it was just the best day it was I'm the so best glad. day i you could go at my own friend. pace i could get excited about samurai warriors without judgment <laughs> I could go visit only the paintings that I wanted to see. Yes. Listen. Wait, was, have you done your Enneagram? No. Okay. You need to do your Enneagram. Look, I have been... People keep asking me that. I know I need to do it. But I have been studied and whatever. I'm a blue gold, <laughs> yellow belt. I know. I know. But listen. Listen. And it may just be because I am so squarely a five that it's a little bit freaky okay just how much of a five i am so i may be a little prejudiced towards it but because i want to say but this is different yeah but i am so squarely a five oh and i was just wondering because part of what that you know i'm a i'm an investigator i'm a thinker Mm -hmm. i live you know like Mm -hmm. 75 percent of my life inside my head 100 percent. so all this like I totally get what you're saying about being by yourself on your birthday. Yes. In fact, my 40th birthday, I did a big trip with, you know, like four girlfriends. Um, yeah. And then I had some friends here that came to yeah. the beach. Like I did all that, all that. But on my actual 40th birthday, I sat right here and ate potato chips yeah. and drank champagne by myself. I have a hundred percent gone to one of my favorite places. We need to do like a bucket list travel thing. Cause you travel a lot and I've traveled a lot um the wilcox in aiken south carolina is one of the most beautiful hotels i went by myself turned my phone off well done laid in the bed and then went down for the meat every meal in the wheel because it was right after covid so not everything was open back up i got to know the waiters <laughs> they were great they're like we want to wait on you tomorrow tomorrow's your birthday we're gonna make a big deal i'm like don't make a big deal about it <laughs> well done but well done. you know I, the bartender no, I gave me it was great you don't have to explain that to me by myself yeah because i didn't have to keep up with anybody else i, I could just it. do what i wanted at my own pace well good and i'm glad it was a good day glad it was, it was a, a good day. day it was yeah. a great day good. great day and now i'm ordering textbooks i'm sorry. about to start reading for class I'm sorry. It's very short lived, but that's all right. I'm very excited about that. Okay. Well, um, are we ready to move on? Yes. Our, so, our segment of find your favorites that we're yes. going to take every week, we're going to take turns. Um, and it could be any variety of things. It could be find your favorite song, find your favorite podcast, find your favorite Amazon find this week. Any, any, we are not limiting ourselves. Mm-mm. So hit us, Katie. What have we got for us this week? So, uh, like I said, I've just ordered a bunch of textbooks. I'm going to have to start reading things about Jesus because. I'm done with Old Testament, no more Moses. So I'm moving on to Jesus. Try not to sound so disappointed. <laughs> I'm actually very excited about my New Testament professor. She sounds fabulous. 
but I gotta start reading a bunch of things. Gotta about start reading about Jesus again. <laughs> but this summer, <laughs> what I did was my friend and I had this little bitty book club that was just the two of us, and it was wonderful. And we read some of the best books. And I'm not going to be able to read for pleasure much longer, I don't think. I'm going to try to still read a couple books every year. Um, we'll see, though. There's a lot of reading this semester. So um, the first one is by far one of my favorite. It's on my top favorite books ever. It's called Hello Beautiful. I, too, loved this book. Just read it. Just and really liked loved it. loved it. Um, it is a homage not really a retelling because they reference that they think they are the march sisters from little women but it is basically a retelling of little women in the 1980s you know, i forgot all about that part of it yep. i read that before i read it and then i forgot that was the case but now it makes more sense doesn't yeah. it with all that yeah. happens in the yeah. you know we won't spoil yeah, it for yeah, you yeah. but it is really first of all set in the 80s which i love and it was just, so, it was so good. It was so heartfelt. And the relationship with the sisters was so well written. It was just and great. It's told, it's told from different viewpoints. So yes. different chapters are from different viewpoints, different, which yeah. I always enjoy. Yes. Yeah, it was great. It was one of my favorite, favorite books. Along that same line, I'm going to lump these two together. You know, I do a lot of writing. And I don't like to be in a silent house. And so if I'm writing and I don't want um, like to have the TV on of words because that's distracting. One of my very favorite soundtracks is Little Women. Hmm. See, I made that connection. Nice it's the Little Women soundtrack. The one that Greta Gerwig, who just did Barbie. If you haven't seen that Little Women, it's a very good movie as well. But that soundtrack is one of the best ones to have on in the background um and i love it so it was a little womeny kind of summer because let me tell you speaking of background music yeah I, ha I had to spend an hour in the bank yesterday trying to get an account love set it. up for an estate i'm working on mm -hmm. they were playing jazz music like elevator jazz or like no no like actual jazz yeah not like music jazz it was like jazz music and some jazz music i like some of it makes me anxious yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i was anxious <laughs> in my yesterday so well, they need suggest, to play the little women i'm gonna suggest to them perhaps they should try the little women soundtrack yes it is so i'm telling you it's so good and it's one of those that i can play on a loop and not get tired of it like if i am done I'm not done with something and I got to start over. It doesn't bug me. It's just so beautiful. Okay, um, that's good to know. I like this information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Little Women soundtrack and Hello Beautiful. The other thing you have got to read before the Netflix series comes out, they're starting production. Well, not anymore. <laughs> um, it's delayed, I'm sure. But The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Have you read that one? Read too? It. Oh read my it. gosh. Loved it. Yep. So good. So very good. One of my favorite books as well. Just a real, real good read. So I'm very excited um, for y'all to read that and to for that movie to come out. I don't think they've done any casting yet, but I didn't know it was gonna be a Netflix optioned it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'll be interested to see who they cast for the husband. I know. Yeah. I have a dream cast, but you know. They'll never do what I say. <laughs> um, so Mandy and I have never made any um, qualms about this. We love Americana music. The new Tyler Childers song is fantastic. I cannot wait for the rest of the album to come out. I have not even watched the very, unfortunately, very controversial. I don't know why it's controversial music video because I haven't watched music videos since MTV quit showing them back in like 1998. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's wonderful that he's great. I love all of his I music. Love, I love Tyler. I love him. So that new song really speaks to me on a lot of levels. And we'll just leave it at that. Agreed. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> the other series that you have to watch is Idris Elba <laughs> and Hijacked on Apple TV. <laughs> oh. oh. First of all, who cannot? I mean, I can look at Idris Elba all day long. <laughs> right, ma'am. <laughs> right. But this is so suspenseful until the very last moment of the show. Yeah. And it yeah. was so good. And if you like cliffhangers and suspense and it's just really really good and he is so good and i just want him to run my life because he I did such a good that. job on that, that for that for I sure mean, huh. so right. you know i just loved it so watch that and you can yeah. thank me later and i think i watched it maybe in a weekend oh yeah 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 like, it's I all out now going on so i yeah. think i've mainlined it yeah because it's it's not it's a limited series i don't think they'll be and it's but it is every two and every uh every episode ends like on a cliffhanger so you're gonna want to keep going yes it's so So that would be my one piece of advice is don't start it unless you got some time to devote to it because you're not going to stop yeah i wish i had not watched it as it came out because then i was anxious all week waiting for the next one (laughs) right right is idris gonna die it was, you know, like we were back in the olden days. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, the last thing is I just have taken this summer to be a summer of self-care. And I think everybody should do that. No matter what that looks like for you, what I have done for myself, maybe not what you need. Um, but it has been, you know, it's been hard I have cried tears, like actual tears. <laughs> Embarrassingly, it has been. That's not embarrassing. Uplifting. Not embarrassing. I I, well, I know. Um, it has been uplifting. It has been. I, I mean, I lived for a long time being told that I was not worth the time and effort. And so I really am leaning into that this summer because. Good. Um, even though school's starting, it's still summer. Whew, it's hot. Listen. So um, whatever that looks like for you, make it the fall of self-care. Make it the year of self-care. But so what to give okay. us some examples of some things this you did. It's gonna sound a little indulgent. Even I still have issues with it. But I have I whitened my teeth. So it's not that expensive. But I paid to get the it's creepy as heck. I have molds of my teeth. Yeah. They're creepy, but yeah. I have them. And so I've been whitening my teeth. Good. Um, Cause I drink a lot of coffee and a lot of tea. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, uh, I have a good skincare regimen. Nice. And the last thing, and this is where I just want to blend into the wallpaper in the back of these classes. The worst part is the full length mirrors. <laughs> As I've started exercising around the corner at a women's only gym uh, I love them. They are the kindest, loveliest, most uplifting group of women. But none of that matters when you look at yourself in a full length mirror for an uh, hour. Preach. Preach. Ooh, that was rough. Yeah. And what it made me realize is that I listened to those voices in my head for way too long that I was not worth it. Yeah. Am yeah. worth it. And whatever that means for you, whether it's taken 10 minutes to read a chapter in a book every day where you haven't been, or um, you know, paying a few dollars extra to get the nicer Miss Claire all color for your hair, whatever it is. I don't I mean it can right. be whatever you do for yourself. One of the things I do is uh I've started doing is going back to church choir. But look at that. Going See, to choir that cost you a thing. Right right Uh, but it's good you know that sense of community because you know i work from home i live by myself you know um so that's you know so don't don't think of it as you know you have to go get a man which is fine if that's what you want to do if that's what you need to do do it yeah but it's also you know taking time for yourself reading for pleasure has been definitely part of my and do y'all know we should i feel like the whole reading for pleasure do y'all know about the libby app do you have the Libby app? I don't. Oh, friends, let me tell you about the Libby app. I'm about to change your life. Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. Does it hook up to my Kindle? Yes. <gasps> 
and you all you do is you link your library card to the Libby app y'all it's basically like free Kindle now it can be a challenge to get you know if the books are really popular and they're yeah. you know there can be a waiting list yeah but they've got audiobooks they've got kindle books and you can get them for free love it yeah. love it and it does it hooks right up to your kindle and off you go because there's a new Kristen hannah coming out that oh, i love Chris the Hannah. women it's called the women i don't I haven't read anything about it. i don't know what what it's about but yeah. um if you have not read the nightingale Go do it. Four Winds. Is that the name of that one? That's the newest one. That one. God. Really? It's good, but woo. Yeah. God. And the, what's the, the one Nightingale about, is so good. What's the one? Did she write? Did she write the one about the women that here? Let me tell you something about me and books. <laughs> I did the great books track at Mercer. I've read a lot of books. Yeah. And I think as part of that, I now I read a book like for instance a friend was just like i need a good book and i'm like well here's what i've read recently because i keep track of it on goodreads yeah but i can't tell you what any of them are about or what right. is. <laughs> it falls right out of my head um but did Kristen hannah write the book about the women who were the librarians on horseback in kentucky or was yeah, that deep, but i know women? i've read that book that's such a good book it we'll is have, a good we'll, book we'll work on i'll do some we'll more work on that here with some but like time. that one book the women because i love her so much maybe yeah. one that i try to squeeze in when i can throughout the year so yeah. um yeah i mean just do, whatever it is you're worth it we as women do not have to take a back seat to everybody else Amen. we can put ourselves first every once in a while we can yep. do both we can take care of ourselves and take care of everybody else and so the summer of self-care has been life-changing for me and I'm very so hard, very, very hard. It is not easy to make that leap from, I've got to take care of everybody else first. To, I deserve to be taken care of and yeah. I can do it myself. Woo! And people, people probably would assume that folks like you and I, who are not married and don't have children, you know, it's easy for us to take care of ourselves and it can be, it can be. But what happens is because uh -huh. we don't have any of the other traditional responsibilities, yep. then it's always just assumed yep. that we're the ones to, yep. you know, the schedule is set for the people who have children, Yep, which is fine. It's all yep. fine, Yeah, but it can make prioritizing yourself more challenging. Yep. So I'm proud of you for having done that. Well, and I have been told even this summer, we knew you wouldn't mind. Okay. I'm sorry. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Know, right. So, I mean, it, it happens. Yeah. Um, and you know, the grass is always greener. Um, but they're, they're good and bad to not having a, a little family unit. Um, and that's one of them. One of the bad, frankly, is being, you know, yeah, yeah. the and leftover. You, just, you internalize that. Yep. You know, I, I often tell my sister, I'm nobody's first priority. Very true. And that, you know, you internalize that a lot. Yep. It, it it can get hard. So I'm it very proud be. of you. Yes. Very proud of you for treating Enjoy. yourself this summer, girl, because you deserve it. <laughs> oh, wait. And hey, now my... you're going to be launched out of the cannon back into know, right. school. On Tuesday, I go in for my first plenary. I know that term now. And then classes start Wednesday. So there we go. Back okay. at it. Well, good luck. Thank you. And we, um, this will come out. Um, we're recording on Thursday. So this will come out Friday. We're going to try to keep the same Friday schedule um, best we can throughout um, the hey. year. Katie, I can accommodate you. I can accommodate <laughs> you too. Look, we did it today. Listen. I can be more accommodating than you. Let me just tell you. <laughs> you won't mind, will you? I don't. I don't mind at all. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, all right, friend. Well, all right. Good well, luck going back to thank school. Thank you. Thank you. I'll try to get a first day of school picture. Please do. Like and uh, enjoy the World Series. <laughs>